<laughs> and as always, it's barely still singing it. There's a lot different. Every time I get older, I get up here and it's just like the years. Thank you. You're all so right. How much you know? You're not old. You're comparatively. Yeah. I was trying to figure out, you guys might know the answer that we don't know. When was the last time the three of us did a panel together? A long time. Correct. Thank you for narrowing it down. <laughs> <laughs> you were here earlier this year. Yeah. You were here earlier this year. He just wasn't here. He wasn't here. Right. I wasn't here, yeah. So it didn't count as the three of us if the three of us aren't here. I was going to say the common denominator is the person who's always here no matter what. This guy! Crazy! The great thing is the R2M panel with no R and no M. Yeah, it's R and no M. It's R and no M. Still feeling questions about the independent brothers. It was good to have you. So I think you've seen that until right now. So, Matt, so good to see you, buddy. Yeah, it's so good to see you, straight. I'm so glad this worked out. What the hell have you been up to, man? Not much with you. You just haven't been on the stage, and we miss you a lot. I've been watching from YouTube, and all I see is Robbie up here by himself. Thank you. Who is he watching? He's <laughs> somebody is. Oh, that's good. Thank you. And also, we do uh, a meet and greet, R2 and meet and greet. And yeah, we do. For a while, there was an R2 and meet and greet, and these guys couldn't be there. And they keep the open seats for R and M, so it's just me and two empty seats. It's just so sad. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like a tribute meet and greet. Anyway, it's great to have the band back together. It would have been nice if they had some cardboard cutouts for those movies. Yeah, it would have been nice. Yeah, we just start some non-union versions of ourselves coming in. Yeah, I'm not sure that was the question. How's life? How's life back? Yeah, life, life, life. Yeah. How's your life? Same. Yours? You know. You know what's good? This moment right now. Right! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Isn't that great? It's really good to see you. How old really is Macklin? Macklin is eight. Wow. Uh, yes. Eight. It's, yes. He describes me as a lot. <laughs> You're a lot. Yeah. He's got to prepare exactly. for daddy to come home. Yeah, we just came from Oregon and we were with the in-laws and, and they're just all better people than me. So I really try to like up my game and really like does anybody need a glass of water? Can I barbecue something? Does this need to be vacuumed? How about the cat box? I got a soup. And my son, at eight years old, be like, oh. literally, like almost embarrassed, uh, trying so hard. Like, ah, oh. listen, granddaddy, it's, it's just a lot. <laughs> can I can I have an echo now? Like, this is something, man. He gives it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, when I used to go visit my nephew. I used to like, I'd, I'd take a nap beforehand because I had to have a lot of energy to visit. And then his mom told me later that before I came over, he'd say, oh, Uncle Rob's corner, I gotta take a nap. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot, I gotta take a nap. That's hilarious. <laughs> he does the same thing to me when he, when he hears me getting like short tempered with my, my delivery or in, in response. So I'm like, yes. Oh, you, you need some sleep, Dad? <laughs> no? No, you need some. <laughs> Please. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go lay down. He stopped telling me when it's nap time. That's a nice. Hey, sir. He, Mandy stopped him from taking naps around 7, and I'm like, I'm picking up now. Next. At 40, I tell you, I wake up, and I'm, as soon as I open my eyes in the morning, I'm like, ah! I'm gonna need a nap today. <laughs> and second, I wake up! I'm like, it's happening in my body. Yeah, I don't know. It's just not the same. I can barely jump off a chair. I had to stretch for 20 minutes next thing. <laughs> but good for you for stretching. They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I can't afford the top of Achilles. I just no. Because you've done that, by the way. Yeah, I've done that. Skipping. Yeah. Do you guys know that story? Oh, I'll tell that story, dude. So I just told the ladies backstage as they were like, what the hell are you doing? Um, it's a Sunday afternoon in beautiful, sunny California. I'm having the time of my life. This is when my son did take a nap back in 2020. First year of the pandemic. And um, he wakes up from his nap and I'm, you know, stoned. So I go, hey. Something really cool that I just realized I never taught you in life is how to skip. He's a great runner, he can walk just fine. Like, I forgot he's gonna skip, but come outside! And I place him like 30 yards away from me because I'm, I'm gonna be the, the skippiest dad of all day, of all time. I put him over there, he's by Rich. My wife's standing next to him. 
I'm like, all right, buddy, make sure you're focused right on me. Watch every single thing I do. This is so easy. It's just like running in slow motion. I go, I lift one leg in the air. I go, and I push really hard. I go, ha, and there's a smile. And as this foot hits the ground, I go, ha, ha, ah! <laughs> and I'm curled up in a ball going, no! I swear to God, I'm screaming like that because two weeks earlier, I called Jared and I said, Jared, I'm having this ankle problem. And I talked to your brother on the phone. I called him on the phone. His brother goes, hey, what's going on? How old are you? I was like, 38. And I hear you have this ankle problem. Said, yeah. Yeah, I said, maybe stop doing so much because you're getting too old. <laughs> That's not literally his response. He said, hey, yeah, at some point you can't run five miles every day. You gotta just, you know, watch the news. <laughs> All right, that's fine. That's, okay, great. Two weeks later on a Sunday in front of my son's beautiful blue eyes, I fall to the ground grimacing, and I, I did. I didn't, it's not even skip in plural, it's I, I skipped. One pop to one and a half, like one and three quarter skip, that was it. In the hospital, whole rupture. And one, one of the details about this that's really interesting is the whole thing was captured on his security camera. And Matt sent out to the group the video, and you can't hear Matt talking really because it's far away, it's just high angle. But you sure as shit can hear your Achilles break because it sounds like somebody hit the ground with a whip. Sounds like a gunshot. Ah, yeah. Sounds like a gunshot. Yeah, man. <laughs> PTSD about that sound. Yeah. So let me ask you, did Matt go, Okay, got it. <laughs> no, 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 now he hangs it over my head, and he'll be like, "Hey, I'm gonna go outside and skip. <laughs> you should stay in, Dad, because I don't want you to rupture your leg again." Is that what he'll say? And then we'll be like, in a, in a, you know, we'll be at like a dinner thing, and be a bunch of adults, and we'll be standing around. He'll want to get in on the conversation because he's like me and just always has to say something, you know? And be a bunch of group around and he'll be like, yeah, you know, a long time ago I was here and I visited Dad and I, I worked on this and this and he'd be like, you know what, Dad? Rush is Achilles skipping. <laughs> like as an icebreaker to get into a conversation. And then I have to tell this, you see how sweaty I am? I have to tell the same story every time. They're like, Business atmospheres, and that's, that's my guy, though, right there, putting dad on the spot. And it's just short again. It's just short again. Are you, are you, are you in, I mean, is it healed completely? I'm going to get the hell up for that jump. Yeah, good yeah, point. I was worried. I was worried. Well, should we dive in and do an actual... Let's some uh, questions. Yeah, let's do it. What do you say? Uh, right there. Here. Hi, guys. So glad that you're finally here. Uh, I was wondering, the Supernatural fan base is so huge. What do you think it is about the show that appeals to such a diverse audience? Uh, I think the theme of, oh, geez, you know, look, we don't really know. Uh, it, <laughs> elements that went into it. Uh, I think the theme of family is big, and, and I think what we've created here in this gathering that we get to do several times a year at the conventions is a family, it's like a family reunion, you know, and um, you also, re-watching the shows Richard and I are doing right now. Yeah, Rob and I have a podcast, you can't see it right now. So re-watching it, you know, or watching it for the first time as we're doing, you're, I'm thinking about that the whole time. And it really is so many things worked out that that almost can't be replicated. I mean, it starts with Jensen and Jared. You know, they're they're both so great at what they do, and the relationship between the brothers, and then and, and then it just filters down. I mean, the, the writing, the the production, the uh, surge, the DP. Um, but I think there's something about the theme of family that seems to stick. You guys want to help me out? I mean, it's, it's no, I think you're honestly, I think that's it. I think there's a, there's a very strong through line. And that's been the backbone of the show the whole time, which is the brother's relationship and their search for the connection with family and their creation of a family outside of the DNA of an actual family. And that to me is sort of, people can relate to that. People relate, people relate to those relationships, those trials and tribulations. Um, and 
it stems from a great idea executed by incredible economy. I mean, really, what it boils down to, Rob went through the list, and the list is endless. You go back and watch the pilot, and I'm saying this to you guys who are already Supernatural fans, but if you went to somebody who didn't know Supernatural and showed them the Supernatural pilot, it still holds up as a great pilot. It's, it's incredibly well directed by David Nutter. It's incredibly well directed by David Nutter. It's incredibly well shot. And, and you take it for granted because you know them and they're big stars. But at one point, these were names on the page with no actors attached. And they had to figure out who was going to play Sam and Dean. And that process is not an exact science. And bad casting can ruin great things. This wasn't great casting. It was sublime casting. Because they are literally perfect for those roles and perfect for each other and how they play off each other with those roles. So without that literally lightning in a bottle, which is too many of us even name, you, we wouldn't be sitting there having this conversation. The other thing that needs to be mentioned is they, that we keep marveling at is they did such great casting of guest stars. And I think that's one of the, you know, we're all here today because of that and uh, such great guest stars, such great actors, and, and they hired and, and certainly for the conventions, good people. I mean, we've all become really good friends because these are all really good, good people across the board. And uh, I think the conventions have sort of, have, even though the show's over, it kind of has held that. You know, we're a family, and everybody's here for the right reasons. You know, and uh, and we appreciate it so much. And so I don't know. There's just a lot of love, a lot of love around it. Thank you, everybody. He's an awesome dude. He's preparing himself so well in mind, body, and spirit. He's just one of my favorite guys. I don't know you guys. I don't have a current uh, Tim Robinson story, but I love that dude, and I'm excited to see him. I was excited to see him on the roster for this one because I haven't seen him in, in a few years now. So yeah, I, I am just excited to hug the man as as you would be, and uh, you know, I'm gonna wrap him up and see him. That's it. That's all I got. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't have a story that I haven't told you already, other than uh, seeing as these guys, we've been texting all week, and uh, you know, uh, we share in common the stroke factor, and we, uh, you know, we were already good friends through Richard, because Richard knew him first, and, uh, and then we got to know each other in Travel the World doing this, and then, uh, you know, the, we both had the same experience, and I think that kind of grew us even tighter, and uh, it was going close with him and his family through that. And uh, this is a dear friend, and I just, uh, just love him so much. Thank you very much. All right, over here. Mark. Right. First, I wanted to thank you for Supernatural. Then, and now, it's, it's great. It's wonderful. Good. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Uh, my question is for Rich and Rob. I am very curious about that gym panel. That didn't happen with Rob and Jensen and ended up being rich and Jensen. I'm wondering if you can give us any insight on why. We had nothing to do with that switch. I have a little bit of an answer. You do? So, well, yeah. the, originally what they wanted it to be was a boys panel where Jensen and I would talk about the boys. That was kind of how it was presented to us. And so Jensen was like, we can't talk about the boys. Like, I certainly can't say anything about the season that, that's about the air. And, you know, especially on that show, we were kind of sworn to secrecy. Uh, so, we, that, that was, you know, that's why Jensen was... Yeah, and just to clarify for people who don't know, this was recently in Rome, on the schedule, on the last day of the, of the convention, Rob was scheduled to do a panel with Jensen, and I was scheduled to do a panel with Jared. And at the 11th, at the 11th hour, the last day of the swap, it was Rob with Jared and me with Jensen. But I have to say, you know, with, uh, and, and, I love Jensen and we'll do another one together. I've done panels with Jensen before. I don't know if I've ever just sat me and Jared and done a panel, and it was just the loveliest thing. It was just so sweet. And I've never done one with Jensen. I've done a panel with Jared, but I've never I done one. I thought that was hilarious. But I didn't mean, there you go. Jared, we, we realized being there together that we, a, a lot of my scenes I had were with Sam. And so, we had just the sweetest time. So, if I had all worked together at the end, Jared and I came out and the four of us did a little panel together. That was, that was fun. That was a riot. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.
So I'm playing the horn. Well, I don't know what they're doing. Move it to the left side. Hello. Do it in squeaky voice. It's not even around. It's all right. Oh, first I want to say congratulations to Bob on our team 2018 and him still being shot God. Yes, thank you. I didn't even think about that. And that might probably be still a good guy. And then, my question is, you guys are going to Redemption arc for our characters. Well, Robbie, you need the most redeeming. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I need a redemption arc. I tried to help the guys and got killed. Poof, into the arc. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I would fix my arc. Not die. That would be like, times three. Yeah, yeah. That redemption arc? Yeah, I'm gonna go with Rich on this one. I would have not left in the beginning, and then I would have not died somehow. And then I just been around old John W. All gray. Come along, this in the front. All right. Yeah, I don't know. It's insurance that I would like to be redeemed. Um, in an arc. Like a cute Like a coupon. Like hey, I've got this uh, God coupon. Can you redeem this? Except it's for. The arc? Yeah, yeah. One arc for me is a big arc with two sets of every animal. Um, so, what I really mean is, it would have been nice if in that last scene when Jack was sort of sucking the, the god out of me and, and the boys were like, yeah, go get him, and then they got in their car and dirt in my face and all that. And they would have stopped the car and been like, hold on, Chaka would have been like, guys, I'm sorry. And they would have been like, I'm gonna get And I would have been like, aww, aww. Uh, yeah. Thank you for your question. Well done, Mama. You're right there. Um, I do want to say how much I appreciate you guys keeping everything low key. Ah, uh, okay. I like it. Good one. My question is, who has the best beard game in the cast? How much on the budget do you think they spend? Best beard game? Beard, beard, mustache. I mean, Tim Amundsen. Tim Amundsen is a very strong beard game. Tim Amundsen is also, Adam Burgess can grow uh, a beard in your 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just goes to one, he's like Homer Simpson, he shaves. Yeah. 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 Ye
you just look at her and all of a sudden you, you're different. You pull your jeans up a little higher, you tuck your shirt in, you know, you just, she brings the character out of you. And that's what you always go for in any scene partner. These guys, same thing. They will help bring their character out of you with their greatness. The same thing with Amy. So she is lovely, and I was so lucky to work with her. That's awesome. I'm still hoping for a young Mary and young John Photo. Yeah. 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 Me too. You've done that before, right? Listen. Oh, no, we haven't. That was overseas, actually. Oh, all right. That's right. Well, listen, I'm still hoping for a young, wait, a medium-aged Mary and a medium-aged John Stavone. <laughs> when, when, you, when you're in parental years. Or you're, it's called the Midlife Crisis Winchester. <laughs> uh, and just to be clear, you, the reason you, you have to not be here sometimes is because of work. Yes. And you're working in entertainment tonight. I work for entertainment tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm constantly asking questions to all people like Jensen and Jerry, the super famous people. And uh, it's nice. It's weird. I can tell you this. My experience at entertainment tonight proves that the people that are, are super famous in Hollywood are all really decent people. They all show up and talk. The people that think they're famous in Hollywood, those are the shitheads. Those are the people that don't want to answer your questions and their publicist only wants to give them three minutes. But the stars, rest assured, they're stars for a reason. They put in the work, they spend the time talking with press and that. Honestly, I got a, a lot of respect for, for a lot of these, these people that are, you know, the A-listers of Hollywood after working on this side of the press line because some people think they're, you know, deserve something, and then some people just are thankful and show gratitude. Like your Meryl Streep, your Rocks, your Matt Damon, like these big stars, your Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise will spend two hours on the press line, he'll skip the whole movie to make sure everybody has their... Aww. Yeah, Adam Sandler's a great man. Really, really your A-listers are the greatest. It's awesome. The other ones that are like, I deserve this, is like, oh, well, oh boy. Tom Cruise was in Rome when we were there, and... What? Uh, we were all having dinner in the last night, and we were sort of outside this table, and this big crew of cars pulls up, this entourage, and this Tom Cruise gets out, goes, walks into the restaurant to have dinner. We're all going, oh my god, oh my god, Tom Cruise in the restaurant. <laughs> Everybody's buzzing the whole time. I go into the bathroom, I think a couple people did, and there are like two big guys standing at this entry where we can't get back to where Tom is. I was like, bathroom back here? Oh, of course it's not. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and then, and then, and then I was still eating, and then it's just, things just start to buzz again. Like, it's, it's happening to be pretty funny. And Tom walks out, and he walks outside this restaurant with a whole bunch of tables. And as soon as he walks out, everybody just starts applauding. Yeah. It was really cool, man. And Tom was so, he was all, thank you, thank you. you know, he was very, very spontaneous applause in Italy. Yeah. For Tom Cruise, the people were just like, yeah. And I thought that was one of the coolest it's things I've so ever seen. so cool. And all of a sudden, then he was just... Tom Cruise, the big smile, the wave. He's so gracious, he really was. It was really cool. Yeah. I love hearing that, Matt. You know, that, that's cool. I love hearing that. That's awesome. That the, that the people we want to be awesome are awesome. Yeah. And the thing, people we think are going to be douchebags are douchebags. <laughs> uh, all right, who, who are we talking about? Are we on, uh, over here, okay. Hi. Oh, 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 oh. oh that's fine? Like, hi. I just haven't done a bit with these guys in a long time trying to figure it out. Hi, uh, my name is Adrian. This is, uh, I discovered Supernatural and binged the entire thing. And there are uh, strange times that we don't speak of anymore. Um, but uh, that led me down this rabbit hole and I found your podcast as well. So I'm curious as to what in your rewatching the show as a normal consumer and actor, what, what are the scenes that have most surprised you so far? Scenes? Yeah, scenes. Ooh, that's yeah. pretty, that's tricky. Um, I will say, I will uh, say what's, what's, I don't know if it surprised me, but impressed me, is just how consistently good the show is. I know we say that a lot, but I think a lot about, and I've talked to Rob a lot about, what the lineup of TV must have been. It must have been Supernatural, Shit, poop, and garbage. I mean, it happened like Dawson's Creek and other bullshit. So get me out of the and you know, you got, you got this show, and you got Jeremy Jensen who are doing movie level acting. That episode where Jared's got to go shoot the girl and Jensen is standing there, that's that movie, um, that, that seems unbelievable. Like, you, you're, you're watching these guys do 
What could be schlocky CWTV? It's so elevated, what they do, and the writing that they've been handed, and the way it's shot. It's just an elevated experience, man. That's what I take away. Bravo? Yeah, and, and just, uh, you know, we've been doing these conventions now for, geez, 15 years, uh, and I had never sat down and watched the show. I, I've seen a few, I've seen my episodes, I've seen some of my friends' episodes, I've seen several of Richard's that he directed, but like I've never seen Matt's first episode, I've never seen that before. And, but I've seen scenes, I see this, as I watch the collages that you do, the videos that people make, and same with Misha's first episode. I never sat down and watched that, so it was, it was really wild to see something I thought I knew, but actually see it, and go, you know, like, it's like if there's an old movie you haven't seen, but you've seen scenes of it so many times, then you get to finally sit down and watch it, like, oh, okay, so, and, like, I just, I just, this vision of when Misha came in, he's got the wings, and that everybody went like, ah, oh, Castiel. I didn't realize they thought he was evil, and they're gonna try to shoot him. You know, I didn't, I didn't have the curtain in it. They were like, ah, oh, this, this guy's super evil. Um, and, and, uh, and that's even that episode. It just didn't line up how I thought it was gonna line up. That, you know, that was a little more like Back to the Future, when, when Jensen first sees him in the diner. Uh, just all that stuff, just like, ah, oh, okay. It's just like, you're seeing the puzzle put together finally, and, and that's kind of cool. Uh, and like Rich said, it's just, I'm just pleasantly surprised at how consistently, starting with the first season, it's just been great, and every season seems to get even better. And you're like, wow, because the first season was great. Yeah, we're, we're in the middle of season four. Now we're in the middle of season four, and it's just rocking. Wow. And we have to work to try to come up with criticisms, because that's part of it. We have to give, give a review, right. and we have to be kind of like, Different every time, but every time we're like, well, that was a whole yeah, we try to be honest about it, man. I mean, like, if we try to give our genuine opinion about what we like and what doesn't necessarily land for us, and, you know, it's consistently really good. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I've, got, I've got a question exclusively for which if I do have a general question for the others. The main question before it was, were you ever in an episode of Cold Case? Because I swear I saw you in it, but I can't tell you listed in any of the comments. Nope. I was. <laughs> <laughs> it was Roger's song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put a sword over here. It looked just like you when you play, when, especially when you're young, so you're younger when you are. This is the most supernatural. And it sounded just like you. It was Roger. Right. Good in there. <laughs> Oh, you're in for a rude awakening. With the knowledge that the word guys, with the knowledge that the word jank comes from the ancient Greek guys and kings of Earthborn, when they talk about Nephilims being a race of giant species, they don't mean that they're going to be really tall. It just means that they're going to be Earthborn, I suppose, so celestial may like their heavenly parent. That a question? Yeah, that's what you think. Oh, I agree. Wow. Directing music, what would be like the number one gig for you to get? If not acting? 
Oh, you can still ask, but like, let's say you want to be a superhero or you want to be in a amazing drama. I didn't even know that was in this. So if you could be an actor, director, musician, or superhero. I'm going to go with superhero. I think that's, uh, I'll go with superhero. Fellas? I mean, you know, I want to do, I want to be a superhero who's also a rock star. But can't you be, a, if you're a superhero, can't you still be like an act? Random people to death. Yeah. Like, you know, like, when I'm super here to stretch people, I'm called a shredder. <laughs> yeah. But also we like it all, huh? Only bad people get hurt. Only bad people get hurt. Everybody else is not yeah. yeah. The bad people. So if you have a cause with a lot of bad people. We'd all be superhero like musicians. Rob be the shredder. I'd be the tromboner. <laughs> and I'd be the flutist. Smell the days of the week now. <laughs> that 
I would enjoy the shit out of freaking him out. Yeah. <laughs> Well, tell Gary I say hello right now. Okay, so my question is, so all of you have played a uh, powerful creature at some point. What, if you had the powers that your characters did, what, like, what's the most chaotic thing you would do? Tell my character aren't intense. Yeah. <laughs> and just like, you as yourself, not as a Right, right. Chaotic. Chaotic, huh? I will take all the numbers off the seats. Good luck! Good luck. Ah. Um, chaos, huh? I love chaos. Oh. Uh, um, I, it was just, since when I play Michael, I can just flick and people would disappear. Right now, I would just go, psh, and be gone. We wouldn't have to even answer this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm away. I can't believe you would. I wouldn't do it in a, in a mean way. Yeah. Like, I wish I was in a pot circle somewhere instead of this question. <laughs> you can be in a pot circle too. Yeah, you can be in a pot circle. Don't, I tell, would... don't tell Gary. <laughs> I yeah. I noticed you do. Matt? <laughs> uh, we time all the traffic lights. Ha ha ha. How did you do it, Bobo? 
<laughs> you can. I saw something recently online that was like, Rob Benedict, actor, whatever, aliases, Robert Patrick Benedict, which was used to be my stag name, right. uh, before I got to sort of down to Rob Benedict, and then another alias is Baba. And you're the only person in the world that's ever called me Bucky Baba. But now people know that you guys know it was Baba, right? Uh, You ever heard a time when Rob wanted to be called Bingo? No, never. You ever heard Bingo Bango Baba? You ever heard Bingo Bango Baba? No. Rob, man, you remember Bingo Bango Baba. But to answer this young lady's question, I, uh, I, you know, I thought about, I still can't, I feel like I still can't look at you. Billy, 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 in season 11, when it was sort of outed that I was God, it, it just, I added on to Chuck this, this idea of being a father, an absentee father who could sometimes be really strict. And then in season 14, 15, when I got bad, it was like the motivation was uh, a father that had gone off the rails who was having a really bad midlife crisis. That was sort of, you know, sort of where I started. Uh, but I always tried to have a through line of all still being Chuck. Uh, I didn't want it to feel like a different character than the one you met in season four. So that was that was what it was for me. Guys, you, did you answer yours? Yeah. Did you did you boo? Hey! Big dot doo. Are you Ricky Rick 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 What's the question? Uh, how did you Rob get in character? How did you get motivation for when you became Michael? What was your motivation for sort of being the evil? Oh, um, not to get tired. Uh, I read the script a lot. I hoped to deliver a performance and one that didn't piss That's a strong motivator right there. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I had my picture with you yesterday, Richard. Awesome. I loved it. Dope. Good job, Richard. Uh, so I tried the question for all three, but I thought, I hope that Rob does not kill me for this one because it kind of was Chuck. Okay, great. Okay. Chuck being a great guy. Got it. <laughs> so my question is, what if Gabriel turned dark and was the one to kill Chuck instead of Jack? And how would Henry come back to help him out? Yeah, right? Did you tell me, man? You're killing me. First of all, I didn't know that uh, Jack killed you. He didn't. He took away his powers. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Oh. How would he, like, father-son, father, son, like, kind of like Lucifer Michael type battle? Oh. Yeah. Scrabble. <laughs> they were scrabble to the death. <laughs> scrabble to the death? Yep. With, with Michael over his shoulder, like, giving him hints. What's the noise being made? You're not supposed to get hands from the chat. I know, but it's God. I know all words. Right, so why do you think Mike helped the mic? I don't think he helped the mic. No, I'm not. You are. You are, because you beat me because you take the God out of me. You would kill me if I could help the mic. That's the point! Oh. Thank you for coming.